The sole purpose of this video is to provide a basic overview and orientation of your new apparatus. This video is not intended to act as or replace individualized driver operator training. Individual fire departments may base guidelines, policies, and procedures tailored for best practices. Pierce Manufacturing and Hughes Fire Equipment representatives are not liable for injuries caused from acts resulting from actions inconsistent with the information provided within this video and or accompanying manuals. Refer to the Operation and Maintenance Manual for complete details relating to the components and features of this apparatus. Only trained personnel should operate this vehicle or perform maintenance. You are responsible for learning how to operate this fire apparatus under all conditions without having to refer to the manual while operating at an emergency incident. This video will discuss types of warnings and caution labels. It is your responsibility to locate and identify each of the labels and understand the importance and associated hazards. Warning labels will point out procedure that must be taken or action that must be avoided to guard against the possibility of serious injury or death. Caution labels will advise you that there is a risk of damage to property if certain precautions are not followed. Continuous training, reviewing of operation and service manuals, developing good standardized practices will assist driver operators with a more complete understanding of the components and operation of this fire apparatus. As the driver operator of this vehicle, you are responsible for understanding the function of each component of the apparatus, maintaining control of the fire apparatus at all times while in operation, make operational and functional changes while operating at an emergency without having to read operator's instructions or safety warning labels, operate manual override and emergency shutdown procedures immediately if a component fails to operate properly. Components location may vary with each Pierce Fire Apparatus. Review the exact location of each component prior to operation. Major inconsistencies between your vehicle and the information contained in this video should be directed to your sales representative. Safe operation of any vehicle is the responsibility of the driver operator. You must learn the location and function of all controls, switches, gauges, valves, inlets, and discharges. Due to a higher center of gravity, heavy trucks have a significantly higher rollover tendency than other types of vehicles. To reduce the risk of rollover, avoid making sharp turns, excessive speed, and avoid abrupt maneuvers. In the event of a rollover crash, an unbelted person is significantly more likely to become injured or die than a person wearing a seatbelt. In the event of a crash, unbuckled occupants can also become a hazard to other occupants as they may be thrown around inside the cab. Seatbelts are required while in operation. Please refer to your warranty certificates for details and information enclosed in your manuals. Customer installed equipment must be mounted to withstand road travel and comply with NFPA 1901. Modifications such as drilling holes or welding to structural frame components of the chassis are not permitted. Contact Pierce for instruction and review of non-structural sheet metal or other dissimilar metals for modification. Follow the radio installation guide for further assistance on installing or mounting electronics. Before placing your new apparatus into service, Perform a primary inspection of key components of the apparatus, including all fluid levels, anti-lock braking systems, electronic stability control, and automatic traction control. Weigh your apparatus to ensure that it conforms to axle and brake ratings. Never exceed the gross axle rating printed on the label inside the cab. Exceeding these ratings could lead to reduced component life, personal injury, or death. Review the use of auxiliary braking systems, compression brake, exhaust brake, electronic retarder, and hydraulic retarder. Before placing the apparatus in service, refer to the operational maintenance manuals. 
information on the operation and maintenance functions for the components such as the pump, pressure governor, and foam systems along with other options is provided in either the Pierce manuals and or other manufacturer support information delivered with the apparatus. If you need more information, please contact Hughes Fire Equipment. Congratulations, Kootenai County Fire Rescue Post Falls, Idaho on your new Pierce Fire Apparatus, job number 37381. Please utilize this five-digit job number when referencing your apparatus with Hughes Fire Equipment and Pierce Manufacturing. We'll get started on a brief orientation of your new apparatus. Let's start down at the front bumper of the apparatus. Just underneath the front bumper, you'll find two open-ended tow hooks. Moving up from that location, you'll find dual air horns on the passenger and driver side. Moving toward the center, you'll find your electronic siren and PA speaker. Moving up onto the bumper extension, you'll find on the passenger side a hose storage location with cover. Moving toward the center, an additional hose storage location with cover. And then as we move over to the driver's side, top of the bumper is where you'll find your mechanical siren. Let's move up onto the cab now. On the outer edges, you'll find a turn indicator marker light. That's on the A pillar. And as we move just inside of that location, you'll find the headlight structure housing low and high beam headlights. The high beam is located on the inside. Just up from that, you'll find your turn indicator and a combination emergency warning light all the way up to the windshield where you'll find three windshield wipers across the seamless one-piece windshield. As we move to the outer edge of the mirror, you'll find a flat and convex mirror. Moving up to the brow of the apparatus, you're gonna find ID clearance lights, there are five. And then as we move up to the very brow top portion of the roof, it's where you'll find your forward-facing floodlight. And then all the way up on the very top, you're gonna to find your emergency warning light bar. Let's take a look at the front bumper extension where you'll find the covers in the open position, passenger side, and then also in the center. Dry deck material inside of the very bottom section. Let's move down to the center section where you'll find dry deck material and then also a swivel discharge located on the driver's side. The next set of images are that of your truck uh, from a full perspective side view. And then as we look perspective of the cab, We'll move into the pump panel on the driver's side, and then we'll move now just to the body section. Quick view of the rear of the apparatus, and then we'll move around now to the passenger side full view. Jump up to the cab area, and then passenger side pump panel area and then full body. Let's go ahead and start with the driver's side. We'll go into the driver's space, first starting with the door panel. Affixed to the door panel, all of our safety and warning placard information. You'll also find a door lock and latch combination. It's at the hinge point is where the lock is located. As we move up from that location, you'll find window control for all four cab windows, and then also a grab handle. Let's move inside the cab now in the step area where you'll find your air inlet. Moving now to the base of the seat area where you'll find about the right ankle is gonna be the Pierce logo. This is the information placard housing the date of manufacture, five digit job number, gross vehicle weight rating, cold tire inflation, VIN number, fluid capacities for each component, and also fluid capacity and fluid type. Let's move to the floorboard where you'll find foot pedals for the air horn and also mechanical siren. As we move up to about the left knee of the operator, master battery switch, it's the quarter turn silver switch. You'll also find the engine transmission ABS diagnostic ports for the J1939. Also ABS diagnostics, DPF regen engine diagnostics and regen inhibit, and then also port for your display monitor. As we move to the pump transmission, you'll find instructions here from road to pump, and then also instructions on the opposite side of the placard from pump to road. Just as a reminder, two green indicators, OK to pump and pump engaged, are required for pump operations prior to leaving the cab. As we move up, you'll find your flat mirror and convex mirror controls. 
And then as we move to the upward portion, you'll find at the back of the Allison transmission pad is a 12 volt access. Your vehicle is equipped with a supplemental restraint system airbag in the column itself. Also, you have controls here for emergency lights and also horn and window wiper control. As we move to the dash, you'll find your start and ignition switch on the far left hand side. As we move to the right, you'll find a switch labeled EM, which stands for Emergency Master. This allows you to engage and disengage all emergency lights with one button. To the right of that, headlight switch and then panel switch allow you to brighten and dim lights within preview of the operator. To the right, the OK to engage the high idle indicator and switch. As we move up to the dash panel, you're going to find water, oil, def, and transmission temperature. On the right hand side, the gauges are going to reveal the volts, fuel, front air, and rear air. Directly in the center, you're going to find the tachometer and speedometer. Diagnostic information will display above and below, and then also in the digital readout just below the speedometer. Let's move just to the right, quick identifying of a few items here. As we move up to the very top section, you'll find a monitor for your backup camera. As we move downward, you'll find the Pierce command zone, tremendous amount of information right here at your fingertips. Please see the owner's manual for more in depth. As we move down, you'll find the engine brake on and off, setting switch for low, medium, and high, tire chains, and mirror heat. Pull to apply your system parking brake and push to release. It's the yellow diamond on the left. Allison transmission pad, push button, digital readout, informational note here, pump and drive, and also some caution information. As you move to the right, you're going to find your climate control for heat, air conditioning, and defrost. Moving further to the right, 12 volt access via barrel style, and then also USB. In the center console, we have a provision here for mounting of additional equipment and also a cover area for the items with inside. As we move to the center console area at the roof line, we're going to find a few items. Let's start to the very top section with the yellow placard indicating the height of the vehicle, 10 feet 6 inches, length of the vehicle, 34 feet 0 inches, gross vehicle weight rating, 46,500 pounds, and we also have the five digit job number down in the lower left corner. We also have some emergency warning lights at the very top section. Let's start from the left with emergency master, roof light, front warning, side warning, lower rear warning, and upper rear warning. Let's move just to the right, additional switch panel housing the high beam flash, switch for your siren brake, also your Opticom generator PTO, generator PTO engage, that's an indicator, and then also to the very far right, you're going to find the load manager. Let's go ahead and move further to the right to an additional switch panel. This is going to house all of our floodlights. This is the front floodlight, uh, driver's side scene light, passenger side scene light, and rear scene light. When any of these switches have been activated, the green light will illuminate, indicating the light is active. Let's move to the right where you're going to find your siren control module and also PA speaker. As we move toward that center roofline area, you're going to find your seatbelt information, red indicating someone's in the seat and not belted, green someone is in the seat and belted. Also a do not move your apparatus when the light's on, indicating a compartment or door ajar. Here's an example of a person sitting in the seat but not belted, red indicating that. As we move behind the driver's seat, you'll find shoreline outlet. When plugged into shoreline power and your plug is active, you're going to find that your battery charger system will activate and maintain batteries. Here is the shoreline outlet. Let's go ahead and move exterior now, starting first with the auto eject plug shoreline inlet. It is a 20 amp auto eject plug. Also right next to it, you'll find emergency warning light side facing. As we move down to the front axle, you'll find Goodyear tires, Alcoa wheels, and also a visual sight gauge for the center axle. As we move now to the rear section of the cab, let's first start with the door panel. Safety and warning placard information are fixed to the door panel. Also door lock and latch, electric window controls, and a grab handle. As we move, in move inside, you'll find two roll-up compartments, shelves and LED lighting inside two forward facing on the rear wall seats located with SCBAs also. At the rear of the engine you'll find a lift and turn latch gains you access into the daily checks for oil and transmission. Have a close up here of that rear seat also. Let's go ahead and move to the rear section of the cab where you're going to find the 
7.3 US gallon DEF tank. It is the blue cap. As we move now to the pump panel, let's start at the very top section. We do have an additional cross lay in the upper most left corner. Let's start with the pump panel itself. First, starting on the left with your foam level indicator for foam tank level A. Moving to the right, we have the pump intake and also the pump discharge. These are the two master gauges. In between the two of those master gauges, you'll find the vacuum and pressure test gauge ports. They're currently plugged and these will be utilized for testing purposes. As we move to the right, we have the water tank level indicator. It's the blue module. And then as we move down, you're gonna find your Husky 3 foam system. This is gonna be the module that controls that foam system. Uh, and it is a Husky 3. To the right, you'll find a foam manifold gauge. And then further to the right, the Husky 3 foam system specifications and also instruction placard. As we move to the very bottom, we do have some switch panels located here. The one I wanted to point out, uh, it controls all of your lighting, but also an indicator here for OK to pump will be green in color, indicating your pump is properly engaged. As we move down, you'll find the two and a half inch cross lay and also the front discharge, both foam capable. You'll also find the hail thermal relief valve, visual and also audible indicator regarding overheating of your pump. Below that, an audible alarm. Moving to the right, deluge discharge and also driver rear discharge. Uh, the discharge in the rear is foam capable. To the right, you'll find your pressure throttle governor. And further down, you'll find the number two and number one speed light. Both of those are foam capable. Your minimum operation maintenance placard, we'll go over that in just a few moments. Also a warning placard regarding a fall hazard. When you're climbing on a vehicle, make sure that you face the vehicle while climbing onto it. As we move to the right, you'll find your tank fill and recirculating line. Moving further down, you'll find the engine cooler. That's a twist, not a pull. And as we move down to the far left-hand side, we're gonna find the number two passenger side discharge. Just as a reminder on this warning uh, label, only trained personnel should operate this piece of equipment. That's only after receiving proper training. To the right, we've got the number one driver's side discharge. That's a two and a half also. And then to the right, you'll find the passenger side large diameter discharge. Further to the right, you'll find the fire pump primer. It's a push to prime air prime. We do have instructions just underneath at least 1000 RPMs for best practices while priming. As we move down, you'll find your tank to pump. Let's move further down on the pump panel itself. First, let's start in the upper corner with the Watrous placard. This is an indication of the type of pump that you have. As we move to the right, you'll find the Pierce logo American flag Eagle. This is your large diameter driver side inlet. Moving to the right, warning regarding pressure hazard. Caps may be under pressure. Be cautious when opening them. Also, you'll find a warning placard also for entanglement hazard because of those lines coming from aloft, there's the possibility of entanglement. Important warning here, do not mix different brands or consistencies of foam for the possibility of foam failure. This is gonna be your foam lever for draft and also tank and also the pickup tube. To the right, color-coded and labeled discharge drains. As we move further to the right, you'll find your main pump drain. And then just underneath that, you're gonna find the manual pump shift. As we move just to the right, you're gonna find a pan door located here. Lift and turn latch gains you access behind the pump panel. Let's go ahead and move up to the very top where you're gonna find your auxiliary two and a half inch female locally controlled ball valve. And then also we have an additional drain located here. This is a rotate, not a pull. Let's go back to that uh, pan door where you'll find your foam lever. We have an operation position and also a fill position. Placards on the back side of the door. Also just inside your foam drain, quarter turn. Let's go back to the door itself. You can see their instructions here on that fill and foam label. Just underneath the diamond plated running board, you'll find your foam pump discharge drain and foam pump intake drain. Let's go back to the placards. You have a 1,500 GPM pump. And as we move to the right, the minimum operation maintenance schedule. These are for test pressures at 150, 200, and 250 PSI. On the left-hand side of the placard is the associated GPM at that test pressure. And then to the right, you'll find the associated RPM at that test pressure. Also the five-digit job number in the upper left-hand corner. As we move through the compartments, let's start first the front axle compartment. 
and we'll talk about the very top section where you'll find your Harrison generator control module. The screen's blank because the battery is currently off. As we move to the left, you'll find the S1, which stands for Shoreline Inlet. Those are the breakers just underneath that. As we move further down, you'll find the G1, which is your generator panel. This is your night scan remote control for just on top of the cab area. As we move through, we have an additional toolbox or assortment of drawers. As we move to the next section, you'll find a pull-out tool board. There are two of them located in this space. And then also as we move just over the rear axle, you'll find SCBA bottle storage locations for five SCBA bottles. Three in the front of the rear axle and two to the rear of the axle with retaining straps. Also your ultra low sulfur diesel fill, which is the silver cap. As we move down, once again, Goodyear tires and Alcoa wheels. Let's move back up to the top section where you'll find a warning or caution placard regarding only ultra low sulfur diesel. As we move to the compartment, roll up compartment door gains as access, tool board, release mechanism at the very rear section. We're now to the rear compartment. As we look to the bottom, you'll find folding wheel chocks, adjustable tray, and also a pullout tray at the very bottom section. When plugged into shoreline power, this outlet will be active. Here's the tray in its outright position. The lock mechanism or release is located on the right side. General view of all compartments open here on the driver's side. Let's move around to the rear of the apparatus. You can see the ladder has been deployed. And then also we have some compartments open. As we move to the very top, you'll find long-handled tool storage, then also the 10-foot folding attic ladder, and then to the right, long-handled, or I should say, hose storage. Let's move down from this position uh, to the very bottom section where you're going to find the rear scene lights and also hose bed lights. These are cup switches that has a switch just inside. Let's move up to the ladder storage area. Just above that, you're going to find a warning placard regarding entanglement hazard because of those lines coming from aloft in the hose bed. You'll also find a two and a half inch rear discharge. We talked about that previously on the pump panel side. Also, your backup camera is located here and then also a pressure warning hazard. Caps may be under pressure. Be cautious when opening them. As we move down, we have two additional warning placards. The first one's going to be uh, when you're climbing onto the vehicle, always face the vehicle while climbing on the ladder or onto the vehicle. Also, an additional warning here, never ride on the vehicle while it's in motion. As we look to the ladders, 24-foot extension and 14-foot roof. As we move to the center compartment roll-up door, gains us access. We have a shelf and also, a, I'm sorry, a pull-out tray. The release mechanism on that tray is located on the right. As we move to the next compartment up, we're going to find additional long-handled tool storage and hose storage. Let's move around now to the side of the vehicle. We'll start down the passenger side. Let's start at the rear. We have a pull-out tray and then also a shelf that pulls out and tilts downward. downward. Um, those release mechanisms on those are located on the right and left side. The tray at the bottom, the release mechanism located on the right. As we move now to the center area where the rear axle is, you'll find SCBA bottle storage for up to six SCBA bottle storage. Also a tool board that opens and then the uh, rear wall has additional tool storage. These are the retaining straps on the SCBA bottle storage. Once again, Goodyear tires, Alcoa wheels. Let's look to the front axle now where you'll find additional SCBA bottle storage for up to three bottles with retaining straps. Just like to point out, your vehicle does have exhaust located on this side. Extremely hot diesel exhaust temperatures do exist. Please be cautious where you park your vehicle. Let's move just forward of this location to the next compartment, Little Giant down at the very bottom section. We also have a tool board and some adjustable shelves. Release mechanism on the tool board located down at the very bottom section. Let's move now to the midsection or pump panel. As we start at the very top section, you'll find your electrical cord reel. As we move down from that location, we're going to find our cab lift. We have instructions uh, for both to raise and also to lower. Uh, just as a reminder, make sure all items are secure inside the cab and then also some caution and danger placard information. As we move down, once again, warning regarding uh, climbing onto the vehicle, always face the vehicle. And this is your reel rewind. We've got a 20 amp, 200 foot cord reel. As we look inside, we also have a panel door access. 
As we move to the right, we'll find a warning regarding entanglement hazard. Because those lines coming from aloft, there's a possibility of entanglement. Also, the number two passenger side, two and a half inch discharge. This is your large diameter discharge. Moving down from this location, we're going to find that warning placard once again regarding pressure hazard. And then the American flag Eagle Pierce logo. This is the passenger side large diameter inlet. As we move to the very bottom section, you'll find all of our color coded and also labeled discharge drains. Let's move forward where we have additional storage in the lower section. This is just underneath the speed lays. And then let's move now to the cab area. We'll start in the rear section of the cab. First, before we get started, affix to the door panel, safety and warning placard information, door lock and latch. Also, you'll find at the hinge point a red grab handle. This is for gaining access in and out of the cab. EMS compartments uh, with adjustable shelving, LED lighting, and then roll-up compartment doors. On the ceiling level, we're going to find push on and off white or red lens lights, your air conditioning unit. As we move to the front axle, you're going to find Goodyear tires, Alcoa wheels, and that visual sight gauge in, in the center of the axle. We're now to the officer space. Let's go ahead and take a look at some things. First, door panel, warning placard information, door lock and latch, window control, and a grab handle. Let's go inside now in the officer area. Your vehicle is equipped once again with a supplemental restraint system. That's the SRS. Also, warning placard about mounting equipment within this area. To the right on the A pillar, the fill location for your windshield wiper fluid. As we move uh, to the A pillar also, you'll find a light box mounted with a charger. And then as we move down to the floor area, you're going to find a foot pedal for the air horn and foot pedal for mechanical siren. This vehicle has underneath the seat area of the officer an additional storage location. Lift and turn latch gains you access. Directly behind the seat, we do have a shoreline inlet. It's 20 amp when plugged into shoreline. Those outlets are active. As we move overhead, push on and off white or red lens. And then we've got some components. Fire comm system located on the far right in the officer area. As we move uh, just to the left of this location, you'll find the fire comm wireless base station. And then from this location, the next set of images of that are going to be of the truck's chassis and underneath area. This is just showing you the uh, fill location from top side and also from the bottom for your uh, windshield wiper fluid. As we move to this uncapped two and a half, this is going to be your relief valve and it should never be capped. As we move underneath, you'll find your tire chains at the rear axle. Let's go ahead from this location and we'll move up onto the very top section of the cab roof. Let's first start with the warning placards regarding a non-walking surface. This is slippery in this area and then you'll also find uh, your night scan is located here with a protective cover around the night scan. As we move to the dunnage area which is directly behind the cab, you're going to find your Harrison generator. That's the fill location for the hydraulic fluid. Also, you'll find in the forward section your master stream device riser and then also your Husky 3 foam system. This is the hydraulic fill location. As we move to the forward section in between the dunnage and the cab is where you'll find all of your cross lays. As we move back to the dunnage, this is that electrical cord reel, 200 feet long, 20 amp. General view here of the generator and then also the Husky 3 foam system. Let's go ahead and take a look at the rear section. This is the top section where you're going to find your water tank top fill and also foam tank top fill. On the passenger and driver side outer edges, you're going to find your hatch compartments. We'll go ahead and uh, neck the next set of images, just kind of roll through on all the hatch compartments. We do have one hose bed divider located. It is adjustable. The next set of images are going to be that of the chassis and the engine from a top perspective. These are the hydraulic lift cylinders that lift the cab to a 45 degree angle. Your vehicle is equipped with a TAC4 independent front suspension. As we move just to the rear in this area, you're going to find the fill location or hydraulic reservoir for your lift cylinders.
We're now on the driver's side. Would like to point out on the driver's side frame rail, um, this is where you're gonna find the safety bar. When the cab has been fully lifted, it is in an upright position, you'll move this safety bar into place. Uh, this is to assist in case there is a catastrophic failure of any of those lift cylinders. Just as a reminder, do not lower the cab down on to the safety bar. It is simply there as a safety mechanism. These are your 12 volt jumper studs for both positive and negative. That's gonna conclude the chassis photos. Congratulations, Kootenai County Fire and Rescue, Post Falls, Idaho, on your new Pierce fire apparatus, job number 37381. If you have any questions regarding your vehicle, please contact your Hughes Fire sales representative. Thank you and congratulations.